Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am finally back with an update on my pregnancy and this will be about my whole second trimester. I wanted to do like an every three or four week thing but when I started to come around to doing the updates, I just never did it. I was honestly just being lazy so I never really got to it so I just combined all of my weeks into my second trimester video so this was this video or this update will be about and honestly this video probably would be really really short because my second trimester was a breeze so if you guys want to know what happened during my second trimester make sure you keep watching I do want to let you guys know before you watch this video if you haven't watched my video on my first trimester and everything I went through within my first trimester you probably want to watch that video first and i'll link that in the cards above and then come back to this video make sure you subscribe to my channel stop right now and subscribe to my channel like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see my third trimester update which probably won't be for another 10 or 12 weeks but let's just get started so once again, like I said, this will be all about my second trimester and this video probably will be like six minutes long. There wasn't a lot of things that happened during my second trimester. Um, excuse the noise if you guys hear it. I always say that in all of my videos. It's really annoying, but just block it out. But I do have a little bit of notes and I want to be honest, there came a time in my pregnancy where I stopped taking notes just because I started to not feel pregnant anymore. It was like everything was beautiful. So I just stopped taking notes. But as I go through this video, I will try to remember things that happened. But for the most part, everything um, was pretty good with my second trimester. So I'll be recapping weeks. 13 through 27 i'm officially 28 weeks today so this is all all the things that has happened since my last video let me pull it up on my phone so i stopped at week 12 in my last video so in week 13 i did have hiccups and sneezing which was something really common for me in my first trimester. So in week 13, we um, did do the NT scan and the tiredness did come back. I started to feel a little lethargic again and that was pretty much it. That's all I have for week 13. It, it seemed like as I slowly started to progress out of my second trimester, well, out of my first trimester, um, all of my symptoms started to disappear so I did start getting a little, a little bit a little nervous but I looked on my baby app and there was a lot of women who were the same um, amount of weeks that I was that was going through the exact same thing and they said it was completely normal so if you're around 12 or 13 weeks 14 weeks and your symptoms start to disappear more than likely that's completely normal because a lot of women did say that their symptoms started to disappear and that's why i said this video might be really short is because i really i really didn't have any symptoms in my second trimester so in week 14 my doctor did call me back and my baby's moving right now she moves a lot the nt scan results were within normal range and like i said again there were really no symptoms that I had I started to have minor headaches and minor back aches but it was like nothing nothing to where I needed to inform my doctor about it was just if I'm standing too long or if I'm walking too long I would start to um, have back aches and I would have like slight headaches but that was normal also and then when I say like the NT scan um, came back within normal range there were no um, abnormalities or any defects to look out for so baby was completely healthy and normal in week 15 I had my next update at my doctor's and they increased my thyroid medicine so if you watched my first video within my first trimester you um, see that I did talk about I have hypothyroid hypothyroidism and that's pretty much where I have an underactive thyroid so 
so pretty much my doctor had put me on 25 25 mcgs i'm not sure what that means but 25 MCG, MCGs of hypothyroidism um, medicine and they increased it this time so each time I had went to the doctor they would take my blood and then they call me maybe three or four days later and tell me either it's fine or they just increased my medicine so that's exactly what they did they increased my dosage within my my hypothyroidism so I just went to the pharmacy and picked it up and it's just one small tiny pill that I take in the morning and then I have to wait at least four to five hours within taking my prenatal vitamin. So usually around eight or nine o'clock in the afternoon, I just take my prenatal vitamin. And then that was pretty much it within week 15. They just increased my medicine and I really didn't have any symptoms anymore also. I do have on here that my uterus was heavy. So... When I mean my uterus was heavy, it's like when I was, when I walked, it was getting difficult to start walking now. So I don't know if I need to tell my doctor that I need a, a belt to lift everything up, but it started to really hurt when I walk. And it wasn't like really bothersome, but I did notice if I do hold my stomach while walking, it could alleviate some of the pressure but i'm just assuming that's because baby was getting bigger and my body's really really tiny and i do a lot of walking at my job so i'm just chucking it up as all of those things combined into one is why my uterus or my abdomen started to feel really really heavy in week 16 i had an increased appetite and i will let you guys know at the end of the video how much weight i've gained so far once i do like my belly shot and everything but when i tell you my appetite increased it was like never ending eating <laughs> it was never ending for me and that's so bad just because of how much weight i've gained so far but i was hungry like I just wanted to eat and some of my favorite foods were still the things like the pizza and the pasta I still eat Hot Pockets every day pizza rolls it was things like that that I would eat and I guess it all started to add up but yeah my appetite really started to increase in my second trimester in week 17 I literally have no symptoms like I didn't even write notes for week 17 I didn't, I didn't really have symptoms at all. And then in week 18, I have first baby flutters that got more noticeable with each week. So I did start it to notice more and more like something's moving in my stomach. It wasn't just me guessing. It was like I knew for a fact that those were baby movements. And within, it all started in week 18, so like in week 19 and week 20, as the weeks went further and further along, the movements got stronger, they got more frequent, and that, that's when I knew for sure, like, those are baby movements. So in week 18 is when I officially started to feel the little baby movements or baby flutters. And then I started having major, major, major i cannot stress this enough i started having heartburn and i still have heartburn to this day i tried taking tums tums doesn't work i had to tell my doctor about that she said i can take zantac because i can eat oatmeal or drink water and i literally get heartburn it's whatever i eat i would just get heartburn so i'm just I'm taking that as that's just going to be a symptom that's going to stick with me. Hopefully my baby has a lot of hair and she's not bald yet because that's an old wives tell that if you have heartburn, then you'll have a baby with a lot of hair and the heartburn wakes me up at night. It's so bad. And then I also have in my nose too that I started having insomnia. So I wake up maybe three or four times in the night. Some days I can't even go back to sleep. I, I I think it's mainly because I only I try to only sleep on my left my left side and I do have a pregnancy pillow but that does not alleviate any of the pressure with on my shoulder or on my hip so it's really uncomfortable to sleep at night 
So once I wake up, like if I have to use the restroom or if I want to get a drink of water, most of the time I just won't even go back to sleep. I'm just staring at the walls looking dumb. And I wake up at 5 a.m. each morning to go to work. So that's something that I'm really not enjoying is the insomnia. And then also I haven't have in here too also is when I started feeling the baby flutters as the weeks progressed um baby did have lazy days so I would get really really nervous because if one day I'd feel the baby moving a lot um I you know I'd be really really happy and then maybe the next day I feel like a tick here and there I get really really worried and of course, I went to my baby app and most of the women said that babies have lazy days when they're going through growth spurts. So ladies, if you're in a situation like me where if you're starting to feel baby movements and you don't feel it one day, just as long as you feel any. And I did tell my doctor about this just recently last week that um, baby does have lazy days. She said as long as you feel some type of movement, they don't really care about how strong the movement is just as long as there is movement so i don't really count kicks I, i'm i'm sure that's important for a lot of people but i do have an active baby so i can get maybe 10 kicks in a couple of minutes four to five minutes so i don't really count kicks i just make sure like a day like today i, I feel baby movements but they're not as strong and and that's because i've been walking around and i've been cleaning up and stuff so even if she has been moving I haven't really felt it as strongly and that's only because I've been walking around and your baby can turn inside and start kicking you inside instead of outward so that can be a factor also or your baby can flip and kick you upwards instead of downwards or downwards instead of upwards so there's a lot of factors I'm not a medical professional I'm just telling you guys from experience what things happen with me so that I can share this this information with you all so if you do have a baby that wants to be lazy some days don't fret and then in week 19 I did have my anatomy scan and the whole this entire time my family and I have been calling the baby a girl so we just assumed it was a girl and it was confirmed at the anatomy scan that the baby was a girl and we do have a name for her and then everything was completely normal so that's pretty much it for week 19 we just had our gender scan and that went by perfectly no abnormalities or anything to worry about with babies so that was pretty much a relief even though I knew things would be pretty good and then from here guys I do have <laughs> After week 19, my notes have weeks 20 to weeks 26 just because literally nothing happened. Like nothing really happened at all during these weeks within my pregnancy. So I still continue to have the heartburn and insomnia and that's something that's still happening to this day is heartburn and be waking up in the middle of the night and can't go back to sleep. But other than that, like when people ask me how do I feel, I, I'm like I feel perfect. Like I feel amazing. I feel kind of bad because most women who have these horrible pregnancies and they're like, oh my God, I just, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm like, I feel great. Like I feel amazing. <laughs> like I really do and I can't even exaggerate that I don't feel pregnant. I feel like, of course, my body is a home for a baby, but that's about it like I don't I don't get sick I don't I don't have any food aversions I don't have any weird cravings I do have something that I have to eat every day that I just started well that baby obviously likes is um, gushers gushers gets this baby going and she loves them so I always keep a box of gushers by my bed just because that's a snack that the baby really really likes but other than that there's there's nothing really else I can say about those weeks because nothing really happened at all and then on week 27 which actually was just yesterday the last day of my 27th week I went for a 
well actually two days ago I went for an elective 3D scan where you know you can see the features of the baby and all that good stuff so we all went me baby's father um, my sister my mom it was a bunch of us like it was a bunch of people that went to that scan and I'm gonna insert a picture where and I do have a video too like it's well worth the money if you guys want to get that experience it um, to do a 3d elective scan I also got the HD live video that recorded the entire ultrasound so like when we first got there baby was sleeping and I knew she was sleeping because she has her usual awake times and that wasn't an awake time for her but her dad kept poking her and she started to wake up so once she started to wake up she was like putting her hand over her head and she was like opening her eyes so I'll put that picture in there where she was like open she had one eye open and she had her hand by her face and she was like rubbing her eye it was so stinking cute guys it's so freaking adorable to see what the babies can do inside of there so you guys if you can get a 3d scan i would definitely recommend doing one of those just because it's like you get to see who's in there even though like everybody was trying to look and see who the baby looks like you can't really tell but they're just so they're still just so stinking cute I honestly think that, well, everybody thinks the baby has her dad's nose and obviously has my huge freaking forehead, but that's about it. Like, she's chubby. She is chubby. I asked the ultrasound tech. My doctor, oh, that's another thing. Um, I don't want to jump forward, but I did ask the ultrasound tech at that um, appointment, did the baby look chubby for her age? And she did say she looked, she looked pretty big so <laughs> i do want to talk about because it i just um thought about it was at my last two appointments with my ob so at 23 weeks i went to the ob and they did the fundal measurements and i was measuring 26 weeks so i was like hoping oh it was not a big baby maybe i'm just eating a lot or maybe it's a lot of fluid but then at the next appointment, which was at 27 weeks, the doctor also said I was still measuring three weeks ahead and the baby might be big. So she ordered a growth scan for me in two weeks from now just to see if there's anything because it could be a lot of reasons why you're measuring ahead like um, gestational diabetes, which I go for my glucose test tomorrow. So that may answer some of the questions as to why I'm measuring three weeks ahead but my doctor did let me know there's nothing really to worry about it's just because i am so tiny i'm five two and my torso was only so big so where would baby go baby's only gonna go outward so that's one thing is i'm just maybe i'm just big and the baby's not that big but she wanted to make sure that if it is a huge three month old baby in here when it's ready to come out that you know we take the proper countermeasures to get this baby out because I'm, I'm not pushing an eight pound baby out I already let my doctor know that anything over seven pounds is not coming out of me so <laughs> my overall weight gain after I went to the doctor last week was 20 pounds like 19 or 20 pounds and for 28 weeks, I want to say that's bad, but pre-pregnancy, I was like 142, 143, and now I'm officially like 166, 165, and it's going up and down, but I don't know. I don't know if that's too much weight, but we'll see at the, at the growth scan just how much baby weighs because she did look a little chubby in that ultrasound picture and everybody's just like oh we're so happy that means she could come early and i'm just like yeah but she don't have to come out of you guys so <laughs> it's making me nervous it makes me nervous i won't try to worry that much because i'm gonna love the baby no matter what but as long as she's healthy that's all i really care about and then that's that's really it that I have in my notes. I'm in my 28th week 
and officially in my third trimester I hope that this trimester goes by as smoothly as the last one did this is the home stretch I know a lot of people say that the third trimester is a year long and my second trimester it, it was pretty long like in the beginning it started it was going by fast and then it started to slow down so I'm not rushing it at all I still haven't even my beauty room half of it's going to be a nursery just for the simple fact that baby will mainly be staying in my room for at least the first nine months she'll still have a crib in her own room but then after a while I will be moving from my apartment so I didn't want to completely just you know disarrange things so I have a lot to do that's why I'm not like <sighs> happy that you know time is just ticking by I am ready to meet my little girl but I will wait and yeah this journey so far has been completely amazing I will not change anything for the world I do have my days where I'm just down in the dumps not about my pregnancy but all of us pregnant ladies have those days where we just feel like oh, oh what's you know what's there to do like you can't go out partying and stuff like that and can't drink so I don't know that's the sacrifice you take when you become a home for someone and I'm completely and utterly appreciative that I can you know be a house for a baby so I'm not I'm not even mad about the situation because it'll be over and then we'll all be happy so I want you guys to just take one day at a time like I did and like I said in my um first video like if you're feeling anxious or nervous about stuff just pray I still pray I'm, I'm really big on praying within my pregnancy I put positive energy into the atmosphere so that I can get great vibes within my pregnancy I'm a real firm believer about energy and vibes so I just try to keep negative energy and vibes away from me and I just speak all positivity there's power in the tongue so the things you speak they can manifest so I speak positivity into my pregnancy and I just pray about the situation I have a great support system like I wouldn't change anyone for the world everybody that I have here with me is completely amazing and they're 100% supportive so I appreciate them for that and when my baby's old enough to look at this video she'll see just you know everything that I went through within my pregnancy so that's it guys I am going to do a belly shot and then that's going to be the wrap up of this video so let me show you guys my belly and that's going to be all. So you guys, here's my belly. Like I said, I am 28 weeks officially today. And people do say I'm freaking huge, but I don't really see it. I mean, I am pretty big, but a little chub chubby baby in here <laughs> so yeah that's my belly I don't know if you guys want to see my ugly stomach <laughs> my shirt up yeah. that's it that's my belly for 28 weeks So guys, this does conclude my video for my second trimester update. I appreciate you all for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel, which you should have did before clicking on this video. Thank you guys so much for your support, and I will see you in my next I upload. Your heartbeat. I heard your heartbeat. I can't wait to strap you down in that car seat. I heard your heartbeat. I heard your heartbeat. I can't wait to make your bottle.